the grave my Savior lay. Hell thought it was, it was hell to pay. Angels came flying, stone rolled away. Hallelujah, happy day. One long, sweet, sweet freedom was sin washed away. One Lord at that worth dancing. Hallelujah, happy day. We're gonna stomp till the earth starts shaking Louder than thunder, we'll still go we can't We're gonna try and I'll dance them angels Hallelujah, happy day One Lord, sweet, sweet freedom One sin washed away One Lord, a dead word dancing Low in the grave, my Savior lay. Hell thought it won, but hell hoped in vain. Angels came flying, stone rolled away. Hallelujah, happy day. One Lord, sweet, sweet freedom. One sin washed away. One Lord, at that word dancing. Hallelujah, happy day. Good morning. I'm Reverend Alexis Johnson. I'm the pastor here at Broadway United Methodist Church. And I welcome you to our Pentecost celebration. It is so good to be worshiping with you today. As we get started, I have a couple of announcements about our calendar this week. We're officially into our summer schedule. So there have been a couple changes to it. Tom tonight, Student Life Breakthrough will still be meeting. Tomorrow, um, we have Phillips Cupboard open, and I wanted to take a moment to tell you about Phillips Cupboard. Phillips Cupboard is a nonprofit that the church houses. They are a um, non food item pantry. They carry things like personal hygiene products, uh, house cleaning products, and people are able to come in and make use of that service once every 60 days. It's a unique ministry here in Council Bluffs. And so if you want to be a part of it, if you want to volunteer, they're open 12 to 2, Monday and Friday. They're always looking for more people to work with. By they, um, George Smith is one of the people to talk to about that. So we encourage you to get in contact with him. Or if you know of anybody that has a need, um, could just use a little bit of help, a little less bills to pay, this is an easy resource for them to access to help out with some expenses around the home. So go feel free to share this information with folks as you hear about it. At one o'clock, United Women of Faith will be meeting up in the DeLong Lounge. This is United uh, Methodist Women. They become United Women in Faith uh, because of all the different stuff that's happening with our denomination. They want to create space for everybody to be able to continue to participate and to expand into other churches. At 6 o'clock, the staff will be meeting online, and at 7.30, Bible at Barley's will be meeting over at Barley's. Both groups are talking about the Bible year. On Tuesday from 7 to 8, if you drive past the church, we are a primary polling site. So it's going to be really busy around here. Lots of elections happening. Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. This is one of the changes. Our normally, our school year scheduled family programming is officially at an end. Uh, so we're taking a break from this summer. If you go into new, your newsletter, which hopefully all of you are getting your newsletter or you're able to find it online at this point, um, you'll see the dates for Bibles and barbecue. We're doing those twice a month, and this week is one of the weeks that we're off. So the only thing happening around here on Wednesday is 7.30 praise band rehearsal. That's this group coming together. If you're ever interested in jamming out with us, I know Gary would love to have people at practice figure out if it works, when it works, and what songs you can uh, play with us on. So feel free to come and, and jam. 
Thursday at noon is the men's brown bag study. They are also doing the Bible year. Friday, Phillips Cupboard is open 12 to 2, but our office is closed. So Friday and Saturday, we're going to maintain our discipline for the staff of keeping our office closed, keeping them as unplugged as possible so that they are ready to rock and roll on Sunday morning. And we'll see you back here Sunday for 8.30 worship, 9.30 fellowship, 10.30 worship, and, and all that fun stuff. Another, um, just a couple other announcements pertaining to me and my schedule, I'm going to be like running away. Uh, as soon as the sermon is over, it's a dance recital weekend. I am a dance mom. And of course, she got scheduled for the one o'clock Sunday afternoon show. So I got to be down in Bellevue by noon. Uh, so I'm going to be uh, going to that right after the worship. I'm sorry I'll miss our, our greeting time standing in line, but you, I'm leaving you in good hands. This is a really capable team. And then on the 19th and the 26th, we're going to have guest preachers. You'll get a chance to hear from other leaders. It'll be Christy Waller and Pastor Patty Ford will be here preaching on those two Sundays. It should be an absolute blast to hear from them. Um, I'm going to take a couple weeks vacation time and be as unplugged as I possibly can be so that I get to spend some time with my family. It's going to be a really good time. So... That's all the stuff that's happening in the month of June around here at the church. Uh, and it's good to just do that. And now I want to invite you to be in an attitude of prayer with me. Let's center ourselves. God, we thank you that you have called us here to worship this morning. And we ask that our hearts and minds would be open to receive a word from you today. We know that through the power of your Holy Spirit, you desire to speak to each and every one of us. That you have a call, a word, a nudge for each and every one of us. And so God, may today be the day that we hear from you again, that we receive the fire of your Holy Spirit, and that we are clear on what we are called to do out in the world. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. I invite you to stand and join us in singing Lift Your Head, Weary Sinner. <laughs> Lift your head, weary sinner, the river's just ahead. Down the path to forgiveness, salvation's waiting there. You build a mighty fortress, 10,000 burdens high. Love is here to lift you up, here to lift you high. If you're lost and wandering, Come stumbling in like a prodigal child. To the walls come crumbling. Let the gates of glory open wide. If you strayed and walked away, unspeakable things you've done. Fix your eyes on the mountain. Let the past be dead and gone. Come on, you saints and sinners. You can't outrun God. Whatever you've done, you can't overcome the power of the blood. If you're lost and wandering, come stumbling in like a prodigal child. If you're lost and wandering, let the gates of glory open wide. If you're lost and Wrecked again, come stumbling in like a prodigal child. If your walls come crumbling, let the gates of glory open wide. Wondering, 
come stumbling in like a prodigal child. See the walls come crumbling, let the gates of glory open wide. If you're lost and wrecked again, come stumbling in like a prodigal child. See the walls come crumbling, let the gates of glory open wide. Let the gates of glory open wide. Let the gates of glory open wide. Amen. Amen. We invite you to be seated and we turn it over to Miss Carrie and the youngest disciples. If you're a young disciple, come on up. Good morning. How are you girls? I'm tired. You're tired? <laughs> How are you? Tired too? Did you have a busy? I've been doing an obstacle course in the nursery for a long time. You've been doing an obstacle course in the nursery. Okay. Well, that's, 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 wow. You've been busy. Why are you so tired? Because you're in summer mode now? Staying up late, sleeping in? I remember those days. I remember them fondly. Well, I wanted to um, share a couple things with you today. Um, so I just got back from Florida yesterday. Didn't want to come home. Can't lie. <laughs> we spent a lot of time on the beach. Um, have you ever been on a beach? I've been on a beach. You've been on a beach? I've been oh yeah, in California. I've been swimming in the sea. You've been swimming in the sea. Wow, you're brave. Because I didn't really go out that far. Those waves are kind of crazy sometimes. They didn't have any waves. They didn't have any waves? Oh, that's good. It was a pretty calm day for you then? Mm -hmm. Good. That is good. Well, I when actually went there twice. You went there twice? Cool. That is cool. I went there three times. Cool. So the, the beach is probably my, my favorite place. It makes me very, very, very happy to be there. Did you like to be at the beach? Yes. Really, really was hot on the sand. I know. Yes, the sand is very hot. Yes. the waves but you found a shark tooth is that what you said oh a hook oh cool that is very cool there's all kinds of really I don't want to say neat but creatures on the beach or in, in the water it's kind of kind of crazy hang on hang on let's talk about this for just a second okay just a second hold that thought can you hold the thought okay perfect <laughs> That's her holding the thought pose. So when we were on the beach, um, spent almost every day on the beach, um, I found this one my very last day. And is that not the most perfect, beautiful shell? Like I was walking on the beach in the sand last, not last night, Friday night. It looks fake, doesn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. fake. It's real, yeah. And I was walking on the beach, and I um, saw a little piece of that, uh, the shell sticking out of the sand, and I thought, oh, it's probably just a broken shell. And then I bent over to pick it up. Yeah, and I was shocked. It is the perfect shell. And it's kind of an unusual color, I feel like, too. Yeah, there's a little hole. Yeah, just a minute. And then any time that we sat on the beach, which was a lot, um, we, if you just like lifted your hand up and got like a big handful of sand and let the sand kind of sift out, you would have shells in your hand. There were that many shells. That we went to St. Pete. St. Pete. Um, the sand is like white. It's beautiful. But the shells usually in the sand were pretty tiny. Yeah, like this is a, one of the tiny ones. Yeah. And this, I found this too. I don't even know what it's called, but it's really pretty. <laughs> I probably need to look that up. Oh, that's a tiny one. So there's all kinds of treasures on the beach. And do you know who made those treasures? God. God made all of those treasures, right? I know, there's sand on it. It's okay. Let's put them back in here, okay? But we'll, we'll look at these a little bit better when we go downstairs for Sunday school because there's a ton of shells in there. Um, and my nieces would just bring them up by the handfuls and here put this in your pocket you know eventually you run out of pocket space but I wanted to show you a couple of things here um, so this is one of the sunsets that we saw because every night we tried to make it to the beach to um, watch the sunset and you can see people in this picture because there were always people on the beach doing the same thing that we were doing and the wet and the water was still really warm so the kids would get in the water and the adults would sit on the chairs 
There's some people, yeah. You were taking pictures. Yes, I was taking pictures. And look at this cloud. Isn't that cool? Like the sun. Oh, sorry. Like the sun yeah, the sun is behind this cloud. It's, be it's a beautiful picture. Not that you guys can see it from there, but... Um, and then, uh, so I was kind of disappointed, had to come home, obviously, because, you know, real life, I have to come back to work, have to <laughs> do a lot of adult stuff. Um, and I was walking my dog this morning, and I found this beautiful little daisy that's kind of needs some water now. <laughs> um, but there's beauty everywhere in the earth. So just because I'm not down on the beach collecting shells and watching a beautiful sunset, there's still a lot of beauty here in Iowa, right? Like, we have beautiful flowers, and we have beautiful hills. I found a beautiful dandelion at my house. You found a beautiful dandelion at your house? Yeah, I think all flowers are beautiful. I don't care if they're weeds or not. So we just have to take time, right? We have to take a deep breath and look around and find the beauty wherever we are. What do you think about that? Yeah, so I beautiful. a shell's not the same thing as a, as a daisy, but I still picked it because it made me happy this morning, and it's beautiful, and God created that. What? You have beautiful grass. <laughs> I think we could probably go on forever about that. Okay, let's should we do an echo prayer, and then we'll go down to Sunday school. Are you praying, or you want me to pray? Okay, ready? Dear God. Dear, dear God, God. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this day. Thank you for our people. Thank you for our people. And our food. And, and our food. And our water. And our water. Amen. 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 Will you join me in the prayer for illumination? The words will be available on the screen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts, hearts of, of your faithful, faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. love. Send, Send forth your spirit, and, and they shall be created, and you will renew the face of the earth. Amen. Please stand as you are able and join us in singing our centering song, Holy Spirit.
let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness Lord. holy spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and fill the For the Bible year, we have come to the end of the book of Psalms, and today I want to share with you the words of Psalm 150, which is the last psalm in our book of Psalms, and I'll be reading from the Common English Bible. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise God in his fortress, the sky. Praise God in his mighty acts. Praise God as suits his incredible greatness. Praise God with the blast of the ram's horn. Praise God with lute and lyre. Praise God with drum and dance. Praise God with strings and pipe. Praise God with loud cymbals. Praise God with clashing cymbals. Let every living thing praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Here ends the reading. Spirit of God, stir up your people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Today is also Pentecost. Pentecost is a holiday that we celebrate 50 days after Easter, and I know it's been 50 days because the word Pentecost just means 50 days later. And it happens to fall on the same weekend. It doesn't happen to fall. It's on purpose. That it falls on the same weekend as the Jewish Feast of Shavuot. And the Feast of Shavuot is a celebration of the wheat harvest. See, it, it sounds weird to talk about that, right? Because we're just barely coming into planting season here in Iowa. But the Holy Land is in a totally different part of the world. And so their planting and harvesting seasons are completely different of, than ours. And after Passover, they enter a seven-week series of harvests, culminating in the wheat harvest on this day. And they're supposed to... Practicing Jews from all over the world are supposed to come together. This is one of the three 
holidays in the Old Testament that is a pilgrimage holiday. They're supposed to come to the holy city of Jerusalem. And it was 50 days ago that they had another pilgrimage holiday coming into the holy city of Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover, which coincides with the Christian celebration of Easter. It's all connected. So 50 days ago, we celebrated the death, the crucifixion, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's the season we've been in. Now, the disciples... In Jesus' time, if we're about to read in the book of Acts what the disciples are doing or what's going to happen to the disciples on this day of Pentecost. But they are back in Jerusalem. Scripture tells us that there's 120 people hanging out together. Sometimes when we talk about this stuff, we tend to limit our picture to 12, but that's not what's happening. There's 120 people hanging out together. They have this election to replace Judas. They've had a couple encounters with the resurrected Jesus Christ, including this really bizarre encounter about 10 days ago that we celebrate as the ascension when Jesus is standing, uh, standing in front of them and he says, I'm going to send my spirit upon you. Go and make disciples in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and all the world. And, and then he ascends. We're told he goes up in the clouds. And there's debate about what the heck that means. Does he take off from the earth like Iron Man launching from, you know, the surface? Or, or does he, like, go up, like, fades away into a higher plane of existence? We can debate all the logistics of that about where heaven is and where Jesus actually heads during the, uh, the ascension sometime if you want to. But the point is the disciples have witnessed all of this. And then they're like, they're just hanging out. They're just hanging out at that point. And I don't know if they're supposed to be hanging out or not. It's kind of interesting what what we're about to talk about. But they're just hanging out doing the church thing. They're, They're organizing the church. Like I said, they elected a new leader. They chose by elected, I mean, they they threw dice to pick a new leader. They cast lots. That's how they made decisions early on in the church. Doesn't that sound fun? Um, Can you imagine our administrative council casting lots to decide what should happen in the church and just like going with wherever the dice may fall? Uh, (laughs) Now I'm seeing headline, Broadway Church runs gambling den in basement. Okay. Um, They cast lots to pick a new leader and they're just sitting there not doing what they were supposed to do. Not doing what, they weren't telling anybody. They weren't sharing the message of Jesus Christ to anybody. And all around them are coming in from around the world, the Jews that had been there during the Passover, during the the crucifixion, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. All the same people were there. And so we imagine that this church of 120 people is a little bit of a freight of the crowd that's around them, right? There's strangers out there, strangers that may have participated in the arrest and violence that's done against Jesus Christ. Don't we do the same thing, church, sometimes? And I don't just mean us here at Broadway United Methodist Church. I mean Big C Church. Aren't we Christians sometimes guilty of that? Like, like we like to hang out together. We like to be in our favorite rooms in the church, and we like to hang out with the people we like. And and once we establish a small group that we're really comfortable with, we like to just stay as our small group. And we reorganize ourselves from within, and we protect ourselves from the outside world with, with things like the jargon that we use or the type of music that we play, or um, we decide that it's too scary to go out there. It's just easier to stay in. Now, hear what happens. Remember, 120 people. Here's what happens. This is from the book of Acts. When Pentecost Day arrived, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound from heaven like the howling of a fierce wind filled the entire house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be individual flames of fire alighting on each one of them, all 120 of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. There were pious Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. When they heard this sound, a crowd gathered. They were mystified because everyone heard them speaking in their native languages. They were surprised and amazed, saying, look, aren't all the people who are speaking Galileans, every one of them? 
How then can each of us hear them speaking in our native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, as well as residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the regions of Libya bordering Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them accord declaring the mighty works of God in our own languages. They were all surprised and bewildered. Some asked each other, what does this mean? Here in the reading, Spirit of God, stir up your people. Thanks be to God. The story, the reading that was picked for today stops just before it gets to the, like, the funny part. And the funny part is others in the crowd are like, they're drunk, which I think is so funny. Have you ever known somebody to drink a lot and all of a sudden know a foreign language? Like, what a weird, I've never known anybody to drink a lot and get smarter in the process. Usually that's not how that works, is it? So it's just such a funny thing, like, ah, oh, they're just drunk. But I imagine the crowd's confusion here and the disciples' confusion. Now, sometimes when churches celebrate Pentecost, and I've, and I've seen this done, and um, there's a good chance it might be happening at annual conference right now as we speak, is that sometimes what happens is when people start reading this scripture, then they ask other people to start reading scripture at the same time, and soon what you have happening throughout the room is that there's a bunch of different languages being read in scripture, and, and it becomes a cacophony, right? It becomes chaos around us, and it becomes hard to understand what's going on. And I appreciate what they're trying to replicate, and, and maybe for the 120 individuals that had received the Holy Spirit at this time, maybe that is how they experienced the day of Pentecost. But for me, what I hear happening in scripture is different than that. And I think about the crowds that came in. At the time, the crowds of, of Jewish, good, faithful Jewish worshipers who had come in from out of town, and, and maybe there were Gentiles that came in from out of town because what a great commercial opportunity to trade your goods when you're all in Jerusalem together. And I think about those crowds, that, and maybe they couldn't understand each other. Maybe every time they traveled to Jerusalem, they had to use loud voices and grandiose gestures because they didn't speak Greek. They didn't speak Aramaic. They didn't know how else to communicate with the people around them. Maybe they had been in Jerusalem 50 days before, and there was a crazy loud protest, and Jesus was crucified, and they were afraid to come back to Jerusalem because they didn't understand what had happened. Well, Jesus was there. They didn't even know what was going on because they didn't speak the language. If you've ever traveled to a foreign country, you know how, how disorienting it is to be surrounded by a language you don't understand and how hard it is to access the resources you need to function when you're surrounded by a language that you don't understand and that you don't speak. So I think about this crowd that's gathered around this house and again, there's loud noises happening, and there's chaos, and the disciples come streaming out, and all of a sudden, instead of hearing chaos, what the crowd hears is good news. Not just good news, but the best news. And they don't just hear the best news, they hear the best news in the language of their heart. Because there is something about the language that we grow up with, right? There is something about the language that our mothers and our fathers and our aunts and our uncles and our grandparents speak to us when people speak tender, loving words to us, when we learn the first time that that sound I just made is a laugh, that that thing that just happened is called pain. There's something about that language that connects directly to our heart. And on the day of Pentecost, there were people from all over the world gathered for the first time hearing the good news of Jesus Christ in the language of their heart, in the language that they grew up with. And so I imagine not chaos, but clarity for the person, for the people who are hearing this message. And then, of course, Peter goes on and, and, and the Apostle Peter gives his very first sermon, and 3,000 people are baptized into the church. It's crazy. It's like this crazy revival day. But, but how could you not say yes when you're hearing about how much Jesus Christ loves you for the very first time in the language of your heart? How do you not say yes to that? How beautiful is that model 
for evangelism and outreach. Now, take a peek back at our psalm reading. I love this psalm because it describes a rock band, right, pretty much? Cymbals and lyre and harp and, you know, and I, and I imagine this list of anything that makes noise, use it to praise God, right? You could summarize Psalm 50 with that. If it makes noise, if it makes music, use it to praise God. And then I would extend that even further and say, anything that exists can be used to praise God. And you should be there. So we combine those two things together, the idea that anything can be used to praise God and the Holy Spirit driving the church out into the world to meet people where they are and to speak in the language that they're most familiar with. And we have this really interesting call for the church today, for us and the disciples. I am old enough. I've been in ministry long enough. I'm 40, if you don't know this. And I've been in ministry my entire adult life. I am old enough to remember the era in the church that we refer to as pastors as the worship wars. Maybe what you remember is the first time there was contemporary worship at Broadway United Methodist Church. And I bet you could tell me stories about whether or not it went over well or if people were uncomfortable and upset about it. And I remember when contemporary worship first emerged and people were like, oh, it's the devil's music coming to worship. <laughs> Right? Uh, we were all a little, I mean, people were a little upset about it. it's not the organ. It's the guitar and the cymbals and the drums, and here it's the trumpets, right? I remember one of the things that we said about contemporary worship in the church was that, oh, it's a seeker service. Maybe you remember that language too, where we said people who go to contemporary worship, they go there because they don't know God yet. We called them baby Christians. And once they grow up in their faith, they'll start coming to traditional worship. They'll want to sing hymns because anybody who's old in their faith wants to sing hymns. I'm looking around this room realizing that's not true, right? I mean, some of you have been Christians longer than I've been a Christian. We learned that that wasn't true, but that's the story that the church was telling themselves. We'll tolerate contemporary worship until they grow up and can sing hymns with us until they appreciate the organ. As if growing deeper in your faith means also changing your style of music that you like. And then we had to learn that it didn't happen and that's where it started the worship wars. That's part of what started the worship wars. Was this idea of you have to worship in the way that I want you to worship. You can't worship in a way that you're comfortable, but that's not what scripture tells us. Scripture tells us to use everything to praise God and so now, out in the world, you can find Christian rap music. That's been around forever. There are Christian rap artists out there. There's Christian country music. There are people using that style of worship to praise God. There are churches that sit in rocking chairs instead of pews. There are cowboy churches. You want to see a lot of them? Drive to Illinois. There's cowboy churches everywhere. And they sit in rocking chairs and they sing twangy country music to praise God. There is screamo metal Christian music, heavy drums, loud bass guitar. Uh, I can't understand what they're saying, but I'm not a screamo metal fan, right? I read the lyrics and I'm like, okay, they're talking about Jesus, great, sounds good. But it's all, there's electronic, there's Christian electronic music. I mean, you name it and somebody is using it to praise God. And because of what Psalm 50, 150 says, I say, amen, hallelujah, because there's a bunch of people that hear that music, and that music is the language of their heart, and we're speaking their language to them so that they, for the first time in their lives, might be hearing the good news of Jesus Christ in the language of their heart, and that's the call. That's the call of the church today is to go out in the world under the power of the Holy Spirit and to speak, to be wherever the people are and to speak the language that they are speaking in order that they might hear the good news of Jesus Christ. 
And God has a call for you today. That is the, that is the good news, probably uncomfortable news for you this morning. Is that every single person in the room at the beginning of the birth of the church on Pentecost, they were sent out to speak to the people. And God is sending all of us out now. Every single person in this room is being gifted by the Holy Spirit. And every single person joining us online is being gifted by the Holy Spirit to go out into the world and to share the good news of Jesus Christ. And if you don't feel equipped yet to do that, the Holy Spirit goes with you and helps people understand what we're saying. Amen? Amen. We've come to our time of worship where we're given an opportunity to respond to what God is doing in our lives. And I want to tell you about um, a ministry we just successfully had. We had a block party last Wednesday. And there was probably, there was a couple hundred people there. I didn't get a count. Does that sound right? I'm looking at some of the folks that were there. There were a couple hundred people there, and I knew less than half of them, which means it wasn't like an outpouring of church people. We had a successful evangelistic ministry last week, and it was fun. It was so much fun. Um, Those opportunities, that ministry is made possible by the gifts that you give today. Those two things are not, even if you didn't come to the block party, if you give to this church, you are part of making that happen. And that is huge. And we are grateful for that, and we want to be able to keep doing that. It was such an important witness to our neighbors and our friends and for the building up of the kingdom of God. We want to be able to keep doing that. And so today, as you consider giving your gifts, there's ways to give digitally, which I'm hoping will appear on the screen. Um, There's ways to give digitally and also uh, uh, there's ways to give here in person. And I'm going to pick on Alex and Shauna because I'm staring at them. uh, They're going to come up and hopefully grab a basket and, and help pass that around. But every time you give to the church, you help create opportunities like that for us to do ministry out in the world. And that is our call as Christians. So I encourage you to give as you feel led. And I am, um, I'm going to take off. But I just want to say I I love you all and blessings be upon you on the rest of your worship. And I'll see you next week. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lived, and because he lives, I can face tomorrow, because he My fear is gone Because I know He holds the future And life is worth the living Just because He lives We'll cross that river and fight life's final war with pain. 
and thin as death gives way to victory I see the lights of glory and I know he lives and because he join me in the prayers of the people. God, we thank you for your Holy Spirit's work and witness in the world. We thank you for everyone that obeyed their call so that we can worship today. We pray for loved ones on our hearts this morning, for those we rejoice with those we are anxious over. We pray for the communities we call home, the places we reside now, the places we grew up, the places our families reside. We pray for our nation and our world. We pray against the evil of violence, and we pray for those who live in fear. Send forth your spirit again to the church. Send us out to share the good news of Jesus Christ, with our words and our actions. And as Jesus taught us, so now we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Will you please join us in our last song, Good God Almighty. Please stand. Good God Almighty, I hope you find me praising your name no matter what comes. Well, I can't count the times I called your name some broken night. You showed up and patched me up like you do every time. I get amnesia. I forget that you keep coming around. Yeah, there ain't no way you'd ever let me down, down. Good God Almighty, I hope you find me. Praising your name no matter what comes. I know where I'd be without your mercy. I keep praising your name at the top of my lungs. Tell me, is he good? He's good. Tell me, is he God? He's God. He's good God Almighty. You say your love goes on forever, that your mercy never stops. So why would I assume that you'd be somebody that you're not? Like the sun in the morning, I know you're going to be there every day. So what on earth would make me be afraid? Good God Almighty, I hope you find me. Praising your name no matter what comes. Because I know where I'd be. Without your mercy, I keep praising your name at the top of my lungs. Tell me, is he good? He's good. Tell me, is he God? He's God. 
Almighty's good God Almighty. Praise, praise Him in the morning, praise Him in the noontime, praise Him when the sun goes down. Praise Him in the morning, love Him in the noontime, love Him when the sun goes down. Good God Almighty, I hope you find me praising Your name no matter what comes, 'cause I know where I'd be. Without your mercy, I keep praising your name at the top of my lungs. Tell me, is he good? He's good. Tell me, is he God? He's God. He's good God Almighty. Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noontime, Jesus when the sun goes down. Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noontime, Jesus when the sun goes down. Flying stone. 